That first victory, um, fighting off uh, the Japanese in Kunming, did that kind of vindicate Chanel? I mean, in lots of ways, because people, Chanel, yeah. people were saying that, you know, oh yeah, you, have, you guys aren't going to last two weeks. Yeah. That's what they said, but I mean, uh, yes, that, uh, that first raid up there, because they never came back to Kunming for over a year. Uh, so that, that saved that town. But uh, that's the way it was. We stopped them in Chung in uh, Chungking also. They were bombing the populace there real heavy. But once we uh, once we got into them over there, they never came back. The bombers. Um, we were able to to tie up so much of the resources of the Japanese. That's what people don't understand. They we had a very low priority, but. The guys, what we did have, uh, they had to protect themselves from us, and uh, but the priority was very low, and, uh, and the Japanese, a lot of their resources were tied up, you know, because you see, we could move into a base and and uh, <clears throat> if we could get eight eight airplanes together, we'd move up into one of these advanced bases, and we we got up to the advanced base. Uh, we'd fight until we'd lose our combat effectiveness and then have to go back. Now, if we'd had a higher priority and we could have kept people up there, they'd just come back to get regrouped and then another one go up there, we could have uh, probably attritioned the Japanese Air Force from China bases because we could beat them in the air. I mean, you guys really surprised the Japanese, didn't you? That that first time when they, uh, when you were there, when you guys were there, the AVG was there, they were completely caught off guard, weren't they? Oh, the Japanese were. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh, they didn't know. See, there was no escort or anything for those bombers. And when we caught them, and, uh, they, they didn't know what had happened to them. Um, a lot of our guys, you know, they just bored right in on them. They, they never had, <laughs> had any combat experience before, but they just bored right in on them. And, uh, so uh, the Japanese, uh, uh, they, they got a big lesson. How did the Chinese treat the AVG after that, after the defense of... Oh, everything I got, I don't know how many scrolls that the Chinese had given us. Every time we'd come down after one of those battles, well, they'd give us all kinds of gifts and everything. The Chinese people in those days, they were just the most wonderful people in the world. They're just really good people. And, uh, and I've, cause I've still got a lot of real good Chinese friends. And, uh, but of course, I haven't been back to the mainland, so my friends are all in Taiwan. But uh, there were a lot of people on mainland China that if they had any place to go, you know, you can't all just go. Uh, it's a problem. So, uh, but they, these guys were the best friends I think we ever had. The first time you guys went into town after uh, fighting off the Japanese in Kunming, uh, yeah. what was the atmosphere like? It was very carnival-like? Could you uh, never buy a drink because everyone was so happy? Oh, yeah, everybody was happy. And, uh, and of course, uh, Governor Lung Yuan gave us a real big party there. And we were kind of worried at the time because, uh, you know, he was the only warlord that uh, was not conquered, and he, he wasn't sure which way he was going to go. And finally, uh, we were convinced that he was going to back us and uh, the nationalist government. And uh, so everything uh, worked out real good. As a matter of fact, he invited us all over there. He's got a, a real, it's kind of primitive, but it's a mansion with four different houses. Some were French houses, some U.S., uh, different kind styles, you know. But Governor Lung, after the, uh, when we left the mainland in '49, uh, he stayed over there with the communists, and then he they, he was wound up under house arrest over there, uh, and they killed one of his sons. But the one that you say you hadn't been down to Hong Kong, but one of his sons, I think it's number five son, uh, his name is Shing, S H I N G, and Shing uh, was married to the most famous. Uh, actress in, in China, her name was Lin Dai, and beautiful person. And uh, matter of fact, the night that she committed suicide, I was with Xing, 
He was a big playboy there, you know, and everything, and nobody really liked him, but he was throwing that money around, you know, we'd go into a bathhouse or something like that. <laughs> he'd be full, you know. He'd just peel out some money, and man, he'd try to grab some guy and throw him out there and give us a place, you know. This is this is in in you saying in Hong Kong or in China? Ah, uh, this is in Hong Kong. Oh. Yeah, yeah. He was over in the states that uh, he got so many traffic tickets, they, and he wouldn't pay them. He could have come back, but he wouldn't do it, and so and he, then he couldn't go back. But his uh, he married Linda, and Linda came back to the states and had uh, her boy's name was Han, and uh, to be American citizen born in the States, but she was one. I've got a lot of pictures of her and parties and stuff that this guy gave us. Um, I wanted to follow up on uh, the first kind of test for the AVG. Now, the, the, the second major battle was the, the raid on Rangoon, right? And you had one squad, squadron. Yeah, but I was not on that. That mm -hmm. was the third squadron. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about that? Even yeah, I can. Uh, they, they came in on the 23rd and um, you know, December, and uh, they, uh, <coughs> uh, and this was uh, this was the third squadron first contact, and they did real well. I can't remember right offhand how many airplanes they shot down, but then the Japanese didn't come back. The next day they regrouped, and then they said they were going to come in and wipe everybody out, and they came in with a real big force of airplanes, maybe eighty or ninety airplanes. And the guys uh, shot down a whole bunch that day. I think they shot down around 20 some airplanes. And so uh, they didn't come back then. Uh, my squadron, I came down there on New Year's Eve to relieve them. And then uh, then we had a lot of a lot of heavy fighting down there for for a month while I was there. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, then the third squad, I mean the first squad, and uh, Bob Neal squad, and came down to relieve me. Tell, can you tell us? You know, you said when you arrived in China and you saw the bomb, you saw how people were dying because yeah. of the Japanese bombings, yeah. um, and you said that was like your first kind of real sense of what war was like. Yeah. What was the feeling in the air, for, you know, and seeing these Japanese planes there? I mean, what was the first thought in your mind? You know, was well, the adrenaline going? And well, I knew that uh, I knew that our guys. Uh, 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 I knew that they were ready for them, and uh, but so I wasn't on that raid, you know. But I know that the people just really celebrated. They were so happy, you know, that this had happened. Except it took them a few days, you know, with all the dead people and trying to identify the kin, and uh, it was just really a, a mess up there. But uh, I know the first one I saw, uh, uh, my first combat was on uh, July the 2nd. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, January the 2nd. And, uh, and there were four of us who went over to uh, Thailand on the first offensive mission that we had. Bert Christman, one of the guys, he had engine trouble, turned back, and there was me, uh, there was uh, Jim Howard, and uh, Jack Newkirk leading. And uh, we were going over to strafe the field. And the uh, first thing I knew, we were in string, three of us. And the first thing I knew, <laughs> there were more than three of us in the pattern. And this guy pulled in right behind uh, Jim Howard. And I just pulled up right behind him. And as a matter of fact, that artist did a painting of that deal there. And uh, those are the first two airplanes I shot down. Shot that one off of uh, Jim Howard's tail, and I was just pulling off, and the one coming head on this way, and I got him. But it simultaneously, this all happened in about actually a matter of a minute or so. Uh, a guy I didn't see made an overhead pass on me, and he shot 33 holes in my airplane. He almost got me. And the guy that I was coming into head on, his bullet stuck in the prop and threw it out of balance. And uh, I th had to throttle way back and finally got limped on back into Rangoon.
how close did you get to some of these planes? I oh, mean, I could you know. actually see? I mean, how cl- can you oh, describe I, to us? <laughs> oh, that one there, gosh, oh, and Jim Howard's tail, I guess I was just, uh, um, I'd say maybe 100 yards. Right, I mean, just right on the bike, I'm just, you know, the length of a football field. So, but uh, we came awful close to them a lot of times, you know, and making a pass at them. Uh, gosh, I mean, we'd be right there uh, within a oh, matter of feet. Can you actually, could you, act, did you actually see the faces of the Japanese pilots. Did you uh, actually see? I just saw their people in there, but I never, never saw any face or anything. And I was too busy. However, uh, that's what I was shooting at the cockpit. I wasn't shooting at engines or anything. I was just trying to kill a pilot because then I knew that I'd get the airplane too. Mm-hmm. I mean, supplies are so low and parts are so low that she notes that actually, if you're going to shoot. I mean, you conserve your fire and, and make sure you have a good yeah. shot and don't waste it. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, well, you get excited sometime and shoot a long burst, you know. And and we had one guy down at uh, Gray Lynn that uh, uh, he uh, he got behind this uh, F-45, a twin-engine fighter. And his name was Dumas. And uh, he came over the mountain there right on this guy's tail, and he just held the trigger down and his guns melted. <laughs> We called him Long Burst, Long Burst Dumas. He's still alive. He's out there on the West Coast. Can, can you tell us about um, the raid on, is it the Mingalodon airdrome? Ma- Megalodon. Ma- how do you say that? Uh, Mingalodon. Right? Yeah. Mingalodon, yeah, airdrome. I mean, was that like the first kind of disastrous Well, that experience? was on the 23rd and uh, 25th of the big days. Uh, and then they came in uh, even at night, you know. And that's when I say I moved out to the bomb and I couldn't sleep. And flying combat every day, you know, I just had to get some rest. And so I moved out there with the ground people. Because we'd disperse our airplanes and, and fly them off the field in the evening out to the rice paddies. And then the next morning early, while well, we'd fly them back in. And you had a lot of aircraft, you had a fake dummy aircraft, didn't you? Uh, not down there, yeah, but we had them. Uh, we had them in China, yeah. They melted it out of bamboo, and they were. They're very realistic. Uh, I don't know. I got pictures of all that stuff somewhere. But uh, what 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 were the um, the Chinese like as far as helping to repair like runways after bombings and things like that? What kind oh, of work they're was great. involved? They're like a bunch of ants, you know. It's amazing what they could do, you know, real fast. They, they, they. I, I can remember uh, the, these big craters in the runway, and they'd come out there, and in a very short period of time, they'd have it covered up, you know, just all dirty, and they'd do it. And uh, that's one thing we had. We had just like our runways. You've probably seen pictures of these guys. Maybe a couple of hundred people pulling one of those big ro- rollers. And uh, all of our runways were made that way. And the people, people, uh, uh, the, the small, uh, like gravel, they take these big boulders and bring them out to the village. And the whole village sit around the kids and everybody pecking on them, make little bitty ones. And that's where we got our gravel. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's, uh, it's amazing that they could build a, a ten. If I, later on, they built a ten thousand foot runway there at uh, at Kunming for the BF when they got the uh, heavy bombers there. This is after ABG, it's 14th Air Force. Mm-hmm. But uh, they're just like ants, you know. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us about uh, the bombing of the Sawin uh, Sawin Gorge? Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. That, that yeah. was pretty significant. I mean, can you tell, you were on that mission, weren't you? Can I you tell it. us? Yeah, I led um, that mission. H- how did you, can you um, tell us, really recount, like, when you got the order from Chanel? And yeah. Well, we'd been making some missions down there, but the Japanese, uh, uh, <coughs> see, when we left, when Burma collapsed, uh, then we got run out of Loy Wing, which is our last deal. And, uh, the Japanese just kept driving right towards the Salween, and, uh, and at that time had uh, 
Now, China, and China would have collapsed if it had crossed it. And we were all figuring out how we are going to go out of there on that old Marco Polo route on up to Manchuria and up to that way to get out of there. But uh, uh, we stopped them there and uh, uh, we killed a lot of Japanese. The Chinese, you know, they sacrificed an awful lot. They blew that bridge up themselves, the original bridge, and, and uh, they trapped a lot of their own people over there. But they did it because they had to, you know. And, uh, so the Japanese built a, a pontoon bridge over there, and that's when we went down there and, and, and hit them and uh, blocked the road down there for one thing, and we really uh, worked on them, killed a lot of people. We knocked off part of that that road, and uh, of course that Burma road is cut into the mountain. And uh, if you if you hit up here, you knock some some of the stuff down on the road, where you shovel it off. But if you hit the edge of that road, then they got to do a lot of excavation. So that's what we tried to do, and uh, we blocked them. But one of the bombs must have hit their headquarters because. Uh, Last uh, flight we made, uh, all the armored cars and everything ever turned around going the other way. So they were in ret retreat. But uh, we figured that they would have uh, uh, gotten, you know, if it had crossed it, I think it had been real bad news. 